Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the whole gamut of SME lending and how it's set to increase. Now, uh, Sumanth, we were uh, talking about how banks are looking at this. But um, in the past one decade, banks have toiled with the asset quality concerns, the recovery concerns, and we've beautifully come out of it. In this space, do you think the risks are much higher? How are the collateral stacking up? And how have the recoveries been? So see, uh, as we were talking earlier, there has been a structural shift in the way uh, uh, most of the MSMEs have started working and have started banking and have started looking at uh, their future, which is, you know, the whole GST play, the whole movement of money into the bank accounts, the whole push from the government, mm -hmm. the whole tax uh, uh, benefits which are coming in. Mm -hmm. So that has certainly, certainly supported uh, us and we've seen that the quality of credit and, and if you really look at COVID was an year or those two years were the, should, could have been the worst for them. Yes. But most of the MSMEs have really come out pretty well. Mm. The ECGLCS as a scheme, as a structure, well thought out, well executed by banks, has really supported them in a big way. Mm. That has given a lot of confidence at least to us that there is a lot more that can be done. Mm. Uh, on the collateral, uh, you know, uh, there is a beautiful, again, scheme from the government, which is the credit guarantee scheme, where government is saying, we are guaranteeing any MSME who wants to set up shop, does not have the collateral, mm -hmm. uh, you go out and, you know, assess the business, we take care of the guarantee, which is, mm -hmm. I think is a fantastic thing up to, yeah. earlier that, that scheme was up to two crores of financing, now that scheme is available up to five crores. Right. So that, these are great uh, uh, benefits which are coming in, mm -hmm. uh, great thoughts which are there from the government, and banks are going out and taking the advantage of it for the growth. So support is coming from the government, yes. but Asim, what are your thoughts about unsecured lending? And how difficult is it to do only secured lending? So we began life as a secured lender, but then uh, somewhere, somewhere we also got into starting unsecured lending because we sometimes we ultimately do the right thing, but after trying all the other options. Mm. <laughs> so uh, you know, we very quickly realized that this is not our cup of tea. Uh, and we exited that and this is now a running down portfolio, mm. just about 100 crores. The rest all uh, is, is secured lending and we intend to, to stay that way. Mm. Uh, unsecured lending is a, uh, is, 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 a, is a difficult proposition to do because ultimately you, are, uh, you, you want to judge a customer's ability and willingness to pay. Yes. Yes. And uh, in case there is, in case you go wrong in judging the ability or the willingness, mm. uh, your plan B, which is a fallback on, on assets, is, is limited. So what, what is the solution? What are the solutions required? So I think uh, I, I would I would say a couple of things may really go a long way in helping. Uh, one one is that uh, the impact cost of doing a transaction is very high. Mm. Uh, just just uh, the stamp duty on loan agreements, the stamp duty on mortgages. Mm. Uh, if for MSMEs we could have a look at it, uh, that that could really help. And second is that uh, the playing field needs to be leveled, uh, you know, for NBFCs. Uh, surface is available uh, for for HFCs and for banks beyond one lakh. Uh, yes. I think it's time that it extends to NBSEs as well. So very valuable suggestions come in. Final word and quick answer, uh, Siddharth. How has the experience been on return and exit parameters? Do you think more private equity will be motivated? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Uh, from an exit standpoint, as I mentioned, it's obviously a core part of our diligence process. Uh, there are multiple options. Now you also have the BSC and NSE merge platforms that list SME companies. Yes. Uh, from my last count, there were about 900 companies on those platforms and about 150 IPOs last year itself. But in addition to that, um, you know, when you look at the main exchanges, uh, we have companies in our portfolio that have gone public. Successfully listed. Very successfully. Yeah. Our first investment, for example, went public and had a very successful IPO. Right. That was the way we exited that. And then we've also looked at strategic exits for a couple of our businesses. We're right. completing one next month. Right. So in terms of options, you have a variety of options such as IPOs, sure. strategic exits as well as secondary exits. And yes. we are we're almost four exits. Uh, we've almost we've done almost four exits from our first fund, and they've been strong returns in line with expectations of around 30%. All right, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Big Deal. But before we go, it's time to also shine a spotlight on the backbone of our economy, a celebration of your impact on India's success story. CNBC TV18 and HSBC India proudly present India's biggest SME awards platform, honoring the small and medium enterprises that drive our nation's growth. Nominations are open now and we invite you 
to become an SME champion. Your dreams power India's progress and it's time to celebrate them. Scan the QR code and be part of this monumental recognition at the SME Champions Awards. It's not just a platform but an opportunity for you to step into the limelight.